Hello, I'm Robert Zuprin, and I'm a rocket scientist, and I'm here today to tell you how you can use rocket science in your daily life. The invention I'm going to show you is called the toucan stove. And using a toucan stove, which is something that anyone can make themselves, you can cook uh, an entire breakfast with just a handful of pine needles. Okay. In other words, let's say you're camping in a place where there's no firewood available, or there is some, but you don't want to have an impact on it, or you're one of these people that's against global warming because you're a good person and you think global warming would be bad, or you're an evil person and you think global warming would be good, uh, or you're just too lazy to start a proper fire. Well, with a two-can stove, you can cook your meal with very little trouble at all. Okay, so I'm going to use the two-can stove and these pine needles to cook these two eggs. Okay? So first of all, how is a two-can stove built? It's made out of two soup cans, such as, for example, Campbell's soup can. Okay, if you're not familiar with soup cans, you can see they're quite small. Here's an ordinary hand grenade uh, here for scale. So this is uh, the kind of grenade you might bring with you on a fishing trip, for example. Okay, and you can see the grenade is just about fit, can fit into the stove. But you do not put your grenade in the stove. Grenades are for fishing. They are not for cooking. And if you do fish with grenades in a national park, be sure to ask the ranger for permission first and only fish with grenades in special grenade designated areas. But, so we take one of these cans, okay? The bottom can, we cut out the top, but not the bottom. And we punch a bunch of holes in the bottom. And here what I've done is I've cut eight one quarter inch holes in a circle around the bottom of the lower can. The upper can, we cut out the top and the bottom, okay? So it's cut all the way through, but we also put eight quarter inch hole, holes in a circle around. And then you put some insulation, a little bit of tin foil, aluminum foil, uh, wrapped around the can. That makes it more efficient. So then what do we do? Okay, now we're going to load some uh, pine needles into the lower can. Okay, now here we have a scale. And you can see we have about 40 grams of pine needles in this scale. And we probably won't be able to fit them all into the can, but we'll try to fit uh, as many as we can. Um, just take them, break them, stuff them into the lower can like so. Okay, now you don't have to use pine needles. You can use wood, uh, but you're best off using uh, tarry woods like pine. Uh, although ordinary wood pellets will work, uh, but uh, pine needles are particularly good because um, they are almost entirely made out of tar. Uh, or pitch, uh, and um, that is actually the fuel that the uh, toucan stove makes use of. Okay. Uh, what the toucan stove is going to do is it's going to vaporize the tar into a gas and burn it, burn the gas in air. So when you cook with a toucan stove, you're cooking with gas, um, which is much more efficient and much cleaner than cooking with wood. So, just continuing to take these things, pick them up, stuff them as best I can, lower stuff. See what I managed to load it. I'm happy to know that this can with the tin foil on it weighs about 40 grams. Let's see what it weighs now. So this is now at about 70 
So I got about 30 grams of fuel into the stove. So about 30 of my original uh, 40 grams of pine needles I managed to get into the stove. Now I take the upper one and I scrunch it down, break off any parts that are not need to fit inside the upper hand, scrunch it down so that it fits well, make sure I can scrunch it all the way. But then I lift it up about half an inch so there's a bit of a spread here between the top of the lower can and the bottom of the upper can. So now that's almost ready. So now for the eggs. I'll take these two eggs, scramble them up. One egg. Two eggs. into this frying pan. Okay, so now I've got two eggs loaded into my little frying pan. Okay, now to light the stove. Light it between the two cans. In other words, at the top of the bottom can. It may seem like an unusual thing to do. That's key to the stove's operation. Okay, and once I get it lit, push the lower can all the way down so it just sits right on top of the upper stove. Okay. Now I got a flame. and um, we start to cook. Now the way this works is, is this, is the, uh, the fire is burning here. It's vaporizing tar out of the pine needles that are below it. And so that tar gas uh, rises and then it mixes with cold air that enters through the middle holes uh, which then burns it as a gas flame. Now, the conditions today are a little bit suboptimal because we got some wind that is less than desirable. But uh, when the wind stops, you see something interesting about this flame in that it comes right up out of the center of the upper can. That is because the tar vapors are coming up and cold air is coming in from all directions around the middle, concentrically pushing inward so the flame comes right up the center. Okay. Now this is a, a, a very interesting concept. This is actually, uh, we're not actually burning wood here. We're actually gasifying the wood and then burning the gas. This concept was invented by a scientist named uh, Thomas Reed back in the, uh, or the science behind this concept, I should say, uh, was invented by Thomas Reed back in the 1980s. He called it an inverted downdraft gasifier. And the form that he developed it, he was working for the Department of Energy, it's moderately complex, but anybody could build one who had access to a good machine shop or metal fabrication shop. Okay. Unfortunately, the Department of Energy bureaucrats took the idea and they decided to make it not simpler but more complicated, adding all kinds of controls, motors, fans, sensors, uh, you know, this, that, electronics, uh, to turn it into a research project to meet some arbitrary specifications uh, that are irrelevant because in its simplest form, such as you see here, this thing is still three times as efficient as an ordinary wood stove. That is, we're getting about three times as much cooking power out of these pine needles as we could if they were burned in an open flame. And it's about twice as clean. That is, we use one third the amount of wood uh, and each amount of wood that we use is produces about half the smoke. So it reduces uh, pollution by a factor of six. It reduces uh, the amount of fuel you need to cook by about a factor of two. So we're cooking this thing up here. Okay, and it's now beginning to cook kind of well. It's getting there. Um, 
Done soon. Cooking here. Two cooked scrambled eggs here. Very good. And you can see once again, the plane shoots straight up. So, for instance, if you're out camping, uh, you can keep your hand grenades right next to the stove so that the kids don't run off with them and they're handy in case you need to use them for any reason um, at a moment's notice. Once again, you see the flame going straight up here. This is a gas flame, hardly any smoke, even though I'm burning pine needles, which are among the smokiest fuels that ordinarily you could get. If you want to keep this going, you could throw more pine needles down into it. Um, but this concept, uh, what I've done is simply take Reed's original concept and simplify it to the point where anybody can make it out of two old cans or Frankly, if you're in a third world country where they don't even have cans, you could make this out of clay. Um, just two cylinders, each with some holes, one with two openings, one with the one opening. And uh, I'm putting this out there on the internet in the hope that uh, people will spread this because this is a way to help stop deforestation, both in this country and in the third world. It's a way of reducing uh, smoke pollution uh, anywhere. Um, it's also a way to have a fire with much less chance of starting a forest fire because it is extremely well contained. So I'm hoping that people who see this video, especially those of you who speak foreign languages, will duplicate this experiment uh, and produce versions of this in French, in Spanish, in Portuguese, in Hindi, in other languages that people in Africa, India, South America might speak so that this idea could become available to everyone. So here is a um, very simple idea, the two-can stove, brought to you by the folks at Pioneer Astronautics, where if we can't patent it, we'll at least publish it.